After talking about Donkey Kong, the game that introduced the world to Mario, in the last impressions video, it makes sense to move on to the next game series Mario starred in, ignoring the fact he's in Donkey Kong Jr. The game we're going to be talking about today predates Super Mario Bros by three years and is simply called Mario Bros. In this game, Mario and Luigi are working as plumbers in a New York sewer and have to defeat waves of a variety of enemies in order to get coins and get the score as high as possible. As far as story goes, that's about it. This game is considered to be the first true Mario game, purely because it introduces elements that are featured in the mainstream Mario games that were released later. Such elements include Luigi being introduced as his own character, who is controlled by Player 2, the gathering of coins as the primary collectible, green pipes being a big part of the game, although they work differently in this game compared to the later games, and the introduction of turtle enemies, although these aren't Koopa Troopers, they're called Shell Creepers. The version of the game I'm reviewing is the NES port of the game, which was released in 1983 in Japan, but 1986 in America and Europe. The only real differences between the NES version and the original arcade version is that the arcade version features better graphics and much smoother animation, and it also has some intermission segments which show what certain enemies are capable of before they actually appear in the level itself. So all in all, the NES port is pretty faithful to the original version, which is great because you're not missing any substantial content. The gameplay is fairly easy to explain, which like most arcade games of this era is a good thing because you'll need to be able to put a coin into the machine and instantly understand what you're doing, otherwise you'll feel like you've wasted your money and not play it again. So each level begins and a number of enemies will pour into the stage through warp pipes at the top of the screen. Mario can't jump on enemies to defeat them unlike in the later games, and he has to hit them from below in order to knock them over and then get to them before they recover and kick them to kill them permanently. All the different enemies have different attributes too. The basic turtles will fall over with one hit from below and can then be kicked. But if they recover, they will get angry and start moving at a much higher speed. Then there's the crabs, which work similarly to the turtles, but take two hits from below to defeat. There's also flies, which jump through the air, thus making it harder to hit them from below because they aren't touching the floor a lot of the time. And there's these sentient ice blocks, which self-destruct and cause a platform to become slippy. This is quite an impressive amount of enemies, and works to keep the game constantly fresh with every new level. Unlike a lot of arcade games, it feels like you're progressing through the game itself, rather than just progressing by getting a high score. The score is obviously still a big part of the game, but it feels more like a secondary goal here when compared to games like Donkey Kong. If you get overwhelmed by enemies, you can use a power block in the middle bottom of the screen to instantly stun all the enemies that have spawned, giving you a short window to go over and kick them all. However, the power block can only be used three times, so you have to use it wisely because it can get you out of very tight spots if used properly. Having said this, you shouldn't wait too long in a level to decide whether to use the power block or not, because after a while, a fireball will appear and kill you if it touches you. The only way of getting rid of the fireball is to complete the level too, so there's a constant time pressure on you to finish each level. Outside of the main game, there are also bonus rooms which are accessed after clearing a set number of levels. The goal here is to collect all the coins on the screen while a timer ticks down. These bonus levels later introduce new obstacles to make it more difficult to rack up higher scores. The score is used to build up your much needed 1-ups, so you'll want to do well on the bonus levels and the standard levels in order to build up those extra lives. Despite the game being quite fun as it is, by far its biggest positive point, and the thing that takes it from a good game for its time to a game that's still good to play today, is the fact that it has simultaneous two-player. This mode is primarily a cooperative experience, having you and a friend work together to defeat all the enemies and progress through the game as you would in the single-player mode. However, you can bounce off of each other in the two-player mode, which can be frustrating if done by accident, but it can also be used to pull off fancy moves and get around the stage faster if you're well synchronised with your teammate. You could also play the game competitively. You could hit an enemy from below when it's already stunned and bring it back to life just as your teammate is about to kick it and then force them to lose a 1-up. And because the score is separated rather than combined, you could compete to see who can get the biggest score too. I don't have any footage of the two-player mode unfortunately because no one I know cares too much about this game, but I'm sure you can imagine what I've just described for yourself. One of the only negative things about the game is that the sound design is extremely lacking. It features no music while in the levels, and instead you mainly just hear the sound of Mario's weird electronic footsteps. Yeah. 
But hey, at least it's not as great in as it was back in Donkey Kong. The game just feels a bit empty and somewhat unfinished looking back on it today because of the lack of music and the lack of any major sound design. But the biggest problem with the game is that despite the variety of enemies, the game is still very repetitive and gets boring quite quick, although not as quick as Donkey Kong. This is down to the fact that the actual design of the levels doesn't change at all. The platforms are always in the exact same places and it just becomes a bit dull and uninteresting after you get to around the 10th level. The controls are also a little bit weird. It's like they tried to make Mario have momentum-based movement, but instead he just feels like he's constantly slipping around on ice. And when you actually are slipping on ice, it's even worse, but at least that makes sense. You also have no control over Mario when he's jumped into the air, so you can't jump straight up and move slightly to the left or right, because if you're static and you jump, Mario just goes straight up and you lose any movement control over him. This results in you needing to get a run up before being able to jump to the side, and it feels unintuitive and clunky, especially after you've played a more modern game where they worked out how Mario should control properly. Even though the actual level design remains the same, at least some effort was put into the graphics. I mentioned earlier that the animation for the enemies and the player character are all pretty good, but as well as that, it's nice that the levels do change colours and the platform's design changes slightly every now and then too. Even if the platforms never change position, they don't become too boring to look at at least. So would I recommend Mario Bros on the NES looking back on it today? Well, I would. It's definitely worth going back to Mario's roots and checking this out but it lacks enough variety and polish to get fully invested into it, and I imagine most people would get bored after one or two games. The two-player mode is worth trying if you have a friend who would be interested in it, and it extends its replayability a lot just because it's way more fun with a second player. The game as a whole feels almost like it should be a mini-game within a bigger experience, and I think Nintendo themselves agree with that sentiment, because a modified version of the game is featured in Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario Advance, and Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga. If you're a fan of arcade games, then I imagine you've already played this, but if by some miracle you haven't, you should check this out, it's worth a bit of your time. <laughs> 